For a few years, I tried my best to not think about Snafu, but not because I hated it, rather I adored it so much. Anime getting a sequel five years later isn't actually all that uncommon or unheard of, but after a few years, you kind of stop having hope, or at least I know I do. So when the announcement came that Season 3 was officially happening, I could finally start embracing this one-of-a-kind rom-com once more, and in doing so, feel like something that deserved a conclusion actually was going to receive one. Some of my favorite stories are ones that present ideas from the eyes of flawed individuals, where either they accept they have issues or try to hide away from them. While high school settings are generally run-of-the-mill and predictable, Snafu is anything but that. The entire anime could be summed down to as the struggles of the youth, but that would just be scratching the surface on what this anime truly has to offer, with one of the best trios the medium has ever seen. Backed by a supporting cast flawed in their own right, over the first two seasons we see a rom-com be explored as if it's anything but that, to then reel it back in with a hard-hitting question of what the real thing we want actually is by the end of the second season. Or, in our main character, Hachiman's case, who is that real thing that he is searching for? The three central leads, Yui, Yukino, and Hachiman, all meet and become connected through the service club, where they take up tasks to be solved from other students in the school, but they actually linked up before all that, where Hachiman was on his way to his new school, finally ready to start anew, and then he gets hit by Yukino's driver as he saves Yui's dog. At first, we think it's just three random characters getting to know one another, but having them connected to the point in time that Hachiman truly believes ruined his life really makes the three's journey all the more memorable, especially when you take into consideration this tale is all about owning up to your shortcomings and finding your purpose in this crazy world we all live in. Often as a coping mechanism, people will pass the blame onto others, as the truth can hurt so much that we never want to shoulder that burden alone. Hachiman is one of the best characters I've seen in anime, but he is as flawed as they come. Generally loner characters, they stay that way or things magically fix themselves. Rarely do you have the bottom of the barrel work its way back up in believable ways to overcome his own personal struggles and depression while showcasing others' flaws all in the process. His entire life is a facade, hiding away his loneliness, and every step of the way he finds someone or something to put his shortcomings on. Whether it be a single day ruining his brand new school adventure or society as a whole not conforming to his desires on how the world should operate. By pretending loneliness is the answer, he doesn't have to struggle and can just say these groups enjoying their life aren't seeing the bigger picture as he struggles another day convincing himself he is the one with the best view on life. One of his most interesting characteristics is how he plays the enemy while simultaneously helping those in need. For Hajiman, it's easier to be trash in other people's eyes that allows for the easiest solution to occur. There comes a moment where one of the students, Toby, wants to confess his love, but the girl in question, Hina, has no desire to date anyone at the moment, no matter who they are. Now both of them, they want help from their service club, but helping one will obviously hurt the other. This confession sets the motion of their little friendship group falling apart as they all want it to stay the same, and once she turns them down, things will become awkward. The service club struggles to find a solution to please everyone, but Hachiman knows the answer is something that only he can do. I will confess to her and she will turn me down saying she will date no one at this time. Despite Hina knowing who was there to actually confess all along, they can basically go on as they always were. Hachiman once again sacrificed his own well-being for those he really has no love for. A majority of this group will mock him for trying to confess while others will thank his sacrifices quietly. It's a very simple moment, but it ends up being the turning point for this club, as both Yui and Yukino become furious or just sad seeing how his answer in life is for him to never be happy and for others to be able to continue on. Now from his point of eyes, there's really no issues and this is how he's always had to live. But once you become connected with someone, your actions can hurt them. And if you value your relationships, you're going to look out for the people that you care for, rather than just going for the easy solution in life. Yukino is considered an ice queen by Hachiman, since due to her privileged lifestyle and upbringing, she kind of views herself as someone who needs to help those less fortunate than herself, that despite being free to live her own life, never really did until this club really took off, which let her make decisions that went against her family and usual mindset. Out of the three, Hachiman and her probably have the most in common, as the two of them kind of stay how they feel without really holding back, more so than is socially acceptable. But watching her struggle to express how she feels and why Hachiman's way of doing things pisses her off is one of my favorite points in the second season. She obviously cares for him and this club in general, but similar to Hachiman, she feels like she needs to do everything alone, as she is the smartest and most capable, so logically it's her responsibility. She is oblivious to her own shortcomings of her only 
focusing on one thing at a time, which makes her plans of doing it all herself destined to fail and ruin the club that she cherishes. If there needs to be a new student council president, she will do it and she'll still make this club work as she convinces herself that she has a solution where no one will get hurt. She is stubborn and foolish as many of the characters truly are but all she really wants is to be saved. For being as intelligent as she is, her desires in life are clouded, and by the time the second season wraps up, it's clear who she needs, but that answer could rip everything she has been cherishing apart or simply being mad at the change happening. This know-it-all loner, in a similar way to Hotchman, desperately seeks a solution in life with no easy answer in sight. Yui at surface level would appear to be the popular bimbo who is shallow in one note and though she may not be the smartest character in the school is far from that shadow label that many might want to put on her at least at the start. Out of the three I love how she understands emotions the best and is able to read a room without much struggle. With the other two they would pretty much stay in a singular motion without someone like her spicing up their life and saying how they often feel. She is the energy that this club needs while having her own desires creeping through the cracks. Despite her nice persona, she too is selfish and clearly desires a connection that will change their club and where it'll truly end up may not be what any of them truly desired. But if she convinces Yukino that she will handle everything herself, then she gets who she wants and the club stays as it is for another sacrifice. That fear of change is a very common theme for all the students in this school as you quickly are growing up and soon every responsibility is going to be on your shoulders and what you have now is what you currently know, so having it change even slightly is completely new territory and once it's gone, you know it's not going to come back, which for a teenager is horrifying. Despite this being a love triangle, it never really feels like one, as rather than the focus being on who loves who, it truly is focused on what problems do these characters have and what does their happiness mean to the other. Will one's happiness come at the cost of their friends? Is it better to stay in a stalemate really doing nothing? There's never an easy solution and answer, which makes this challenging time in their life so damn rewarding as rather than this just feeling like anime characters and pointless drama, there's actually a genuine vulnerability to their insecurities. Now often when anime portrays multiple love interests, the focus is on the personality and what the fan should like best. But in Snafu's case, the main point of any given episode is how the characters feel, and most recognize that what they want is going to hurt others in the process, which very few anime handles right. But when those series do, it separates the cliches from the masterpieces without much struggle while also sneaking in the true best option all in the process. I really love the student council campaign in this story, as before the sacrificing of Hachiman's well-being for other people's friendship, when he used to say or solve things in an unhealthy manner, the group was still new. They weren't necessarily friends, but they kind of were all at the same time, so him hurting himself really didn't harm them the same way it does in this moment. But during this scene, it's clear as day where they all stood. Having to get Yoroha out of the student council election has an easy solution. Poor campaign speech and blame it on someone so they can take the fall and not her allowing for her to exit the stage without any negative consequences for herself. But this pisses Yukino off. It's easy to look at events such as this and say, why is it even an issue? Who cares what other thinks? And though I agree, the thing is, that's never truly what Hotchman wants. The reason he keeps helping people isn't because he's in the service club and he's obligated to do so. It's because he generally cares for people and because of his life, the past few years, he's convinced himself this is the only way for him to belong, by not standing out, by being the loner, and when he is the center of attention, take all the hate. The group means a hell of a lot to all of them, and they all struggle to communicate as it's completely new territory for everyone here. Yui had a bubbly group of friends, but never was that true connection like she's forming now. Yukino was a loner, with everything made for her finally embracing two people she cherishes, but struggles to express these feelings. And Hachman has played the enemy for years now, not sure where to go around people who treat him like an actual person and not an animal. So even when his answers still aren't perfect, when you see how he changes his behavior, it's subtle but noticeable character development, finally allowing for him to start expressing his feelings slowly but surely. One of the best aspects that the group's dynamic has going for it is how they flirt and tease one another. Yukino can say some pretty harsh words, where she compares Hachiman to things that really live up to the Ice Queen persona, but her voice is never hostile. It's friends goofing around, where with his former crush Orimoto, she brings him down at every moment possible, not as a friend just being friends, but as someone trying to actually bring him down for her own happiness. 
which is why Hayato shuts her down by showcasing how great he is and how his true friends are better than she will ever be. Despite this being done to repay his sacrifice from earlier, it highlights the difference of his past and present remarkably well, and hits home why his previous way of life needs to change because he is connected to these people and he can't continue to fall on the sword and he needs to care about himself. A big struggle for anyone trying to survive their youth is wanting to find our own path in life and feeling like someone or something has decided it for us. Often it's an overreaction, but there can be some merit with concerns of overprotective parents or just an unfair environment pushing us down every time we get back up. The reason Yukino, Yui, and Hachman are such an intriguing trio to follow is never because of the building romance of will they, won't they, but because all three have something the other doesn't, and even if they end up hurting each other in the end, they truly will help each other find what it is they're looking for in life without having mass holding them back. By the end of the second season, they don't reach this point, but you can notice the motions being set to get there, where Yui tries to shoulder everything to gain her everything. But before Yukino gives in, as being confused and unsure herself, Hachiman shuts it down because someone like Yukino would never let another decide her life for her. It all relates to who loves who the most, but similar to the moment where Hayato's group stops Toby from confessing, becomes a very relatable and parallel moment. Once they fully admit their feelings, there's never are going to be any going back, even if they all know how each other feels. Even if admitting will make two-thirds happy, there will be a shift that will never return to these simpler times. It never becomes a battle of who is the best, but rather what each of these characters truly need and desire, because all three wants the real thing. And as a teenager growing up, it's very easy to be fooled into thinking something is your everything, and it's not for any one of them to decide each other's fate, but walk a path together to figure it out as friends. Now the 8th episode of season 2 is my personal favorite point in this entire anime to date, where the group implodes and everything crumbles to be pieced back together in a similar but changed form, one that's still ready to crumble and start something new at any moment. Hachiman holds this show together, and there really isn't any debate, but all three are memorable and well written, which is a blessing in disguise. The level of vulnerability that gets expressed where the character you least expect to embrace his feelings shows him, and then the logical one that you think will agree ends up running away, it continues to play with your emotions in such a way where you can't decide whether it should stop or go on. Yui being the voice of reason once again highlighting how neither one of them was just a romance subplot just there to keep fans interested on who best girl is, but rather a group such as this will form bonds that are complex but because they understand each other to a certain degree, they can bring out the best and help each other find their true calling in life. It's very easy to view the most sociable character in school as the most loved, but often you'll find they can be some of the loneliest once you get to know them. You can view someone that you don't know anything about past the basics, thinking they have everything made, which then causes jealousy to take hold, ignoring how you have something they can never dream of. A life with no expectations put on you and freedom to be who you want to be. With those pushing back from society, are actually the ones who really want what they are mocking all along. It's brilliant. You can even look at the relationship Hachiman has with his sister, which really says it all about how much cliché is in this anime. Very little. The moments that are there keeps it from going full on depression but never taking the spotlight completely. The genuine bond these siblings share and how they actually talk and bounce ideas off of each other is an element of anime that shouldn't feel refreshing but it is even years after its initial release. Every moment where it could pander to incest bait they run away from it in favor of two siblings who think the other is faulty or better than themselves yet always will be there for each other in the end. When I initially started watching Snafu, I expected Hotchman's loner persona to be fairly one note and not of all to accept he was being trapped in a toxic hell. But the fact that all the characters embrace their insecurities at some point unless they were incredibly minor to the plot is what drives any episode forward. Even if the setting is a nearly empty club room, this anime has more life than most series out there. I've seen countless anime fans claim that Hotchman is them, the no gives a shit attitude, but the entire point of his arc is to explore how he's been trapped in a web of isolation, that because he didn't know any better and was scared to change, he just blamed anyone other than himself. The entire journey of this tale is to watch him and his friends escape their demons and find that real thing that will make this evolving world make sense and have true purpose in their eyes. Where struggling to survive is just the hands we get dealt, but we need those connections to keep us going, so they can bring out the best in us and we can do the same for them. It's not about liking everyone, but it is about working together and not putting yourself and others down just to survive. Where the shallowness of best girls doesn't matter, but just the personalities that everyone has, where any character has a chance to become a person. 
This isn't a series without the typical and cliché. Those elements are present, but I found they were a charming addition like sprinkles on ice cream. They weren't necessarily needed, but they didn't distract either. High school can be a compelling setting, but if you just run with the age of the characters and not the emotions behind said age, you'll end up being forgotten in a season's time. But if you get a sequel anime five years later, and it feels like it's never left, generally that means you did something special with the setting, and I can't wait to see how this story will conclude with all the pain and love that comes with it. But as always, let me pass the torch over to you. What did you think of Snafu and its many fascinating layers? Let me know your feelings down in the comment section below. Remember to leave a like if you did enjoy, and be sure to subscribe if you happen to be new around here. Now lastly, there is my Patreon. For those who want to go the extra mile and help support what I do around here even more, but of course that is if you so wish. So until next time everyone, please take care, and have a good one.